What's the good job? It's Boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're going to check out 10 greatest rivals of CM Punk's career. Now, the rumors have been going around that uh, I guess Tony Khan and maybe CM Punk have finally come to some type of uh, agreement, hopefully, uh, for him to be on the their new show, AEW Collision, uh, coming up soon. So hopefully they can get that all situated. So I thought it only makes sense to check out some of his greatest uh rivals in his career man i'm looking forward to this man going down memory lane when he was actually wrestling and we cared more about what he was doing inside the ring rather than outside the ring shout out to parts fun known if you haven't already subscribed to him go subscribe to him link to the original video will be down below let's get right into this one man. look in his eyes what do you see the cult of a particularly divisive personality. Hmm. As we all await Company Man Punk's AEW return and the inevitable media firestorm that will be sure to come with it, brackets too late, close brackets, we figured <laughs> now would be the perfect time to reflect on the best matches and stories that CM Punk has ever been part of and the dancing partners that did the waltz with him. Punk is a different breed for today's day and age, an honest to God draw, an absolute lightning rod, and one of the most captivating performers in the wrestling business as a mm -hmm. babyface, a heel, or anything in between. Punk has made his fair share of enemies inside the ring and out, and thankfully the former has helped make for some of the best <laughs> the stories Jeff in wrestling Hardy's this suck. century. Uh, I'm Tempest few. hailing from parts so of good. Known, and these are the 10 <laughs> greatest rivals this year was of so CM good, Punk's career. Man. But before we get on with our list, make sure, of course, that you like this video, subscribe, and enable notifications to always on so you never miss a fun list just like it. And make sure you check out all of the other entries we've had in the Greatest Rivals sub-series of lists here on Parts Fun Known. Honorable mention, Triple H and Vince McMahon. Mm. On one hand, you could make the argument that Trips and Vinnie Mac could be the top two spots on this list. But on the other hand, outside of Money in the Bank 2011, Punk's intensely personal rivalries with Vince and his doofus son-in-law, kayfabe and otherwise, didn't lead to the uptick in business that either should have. Yeah, the summer of Punk circa 2011 was about half of what it should have been, and Punk and his momentum suffered for it. Yep. Number 10, Colt Cabana. And now for something more cheerful, and pardon me if I leave my sarcasm setting on for this one. Now, in contrast to the last entry, while it is impossible to deny that Chaco Mountain Punk's public rivalry with Colt Cabana is what comes to mind when people think of their names in the same sentence, that should absolutely not erase the work the two did together early in their careers. During the dark days of late 90s, early 2000s indie wrestling, before there was ever a ring of honor for young wrestlers to grow and make their name, they had to do so by wrestling night after night after night Great matches and cutting great promos. Punk and Cabana were always tied to one another until they desperately needed to sever that cord, but their matches were an attraction of Midwest wrestling while they were coming up in the industry. They formed the Second City Saints when they got to ROH and remained linked until the very end, with Punk wrestling Cabana in his last match in the company. They trained together, they made the towns together, they cried together. It would just be nice if they could have, you know, stayed friends. Yeah. Number nine, Rey Mysterio. Ooh, when central one, midfielder Punk one. finally got a chance to turn heel in the summer of 2009, S it was extremely successful. Yeah. So successful, in fact, that WWE neglected to write another storyline for him for the rest of the year. As Punk was never one to take such treatment lying down, he went home and wrote himself 14 weeks of TV, and that was the creation of the Straight Edge Society. Yep. Definitely the best gimmick work that Punk did in WWE. Mm -hmm. The best rival he had during that time was Rey Mysterio. Certainly wasn't Big Show. Punk no. and Mysterio always clicked in the ring, having very fun matches in 2010 at WrestleMania 26, Extreme Rules and Over the Limit, and again at Capital Punishment in 2011. Punk even threw Ray's daughter a birthday party. I mean, really, he crashed Ray's daughter's birthday party, but that's <laughs> pretty close, I reckon. Such Look good heel tiny heat, Aaliyah man. and still taller than Ray Dominic. This was... Ah, uh, before Dominic became... Mm, that's another... You know what? <laughs> Heel WWE Punk at his absolute best. He was good. Sinisterly singing happy birthday to a nine-year-old girl as she ran away crying. God, maybe I'm the bastard. This is good. Number eight, <laughs> Chris Hero. Just as Chocolate Moose Punk traveled the Midwest wrestling Colt Cabana, a few years later he did the exact same thing with Chris Hero in 2002. This match was a defining rivalry in Ian Rotten's IWA Mid-South, a promotion primarily built on thumbtacks, light tubes, and questionable business practices. <laughs> so when Punk tube. and Hero hit the mat, they made it about wrestling. Great wrestling. Student of the game style wrestling. 
Some people just have chemistry together, and it is a shame that Punk and Hero never got to wrestle on a bigger stage besides mm -hmm. one tag match on NXT, but between their 90-plus minute two out of three falls match, Jeez. several hour-long time limit draws, and their 55-minute tables and ladders match, a match so Jeez. out of control they literally tried to tear the building they were wrestling in down, there is a solid chance Punk and Hero have spent more time wrestling each other than Roman Reigns has spent defending the Universal title. <laughs> Damn. Seven, Daniel Bryan. Ooh. WWE fans who have started watching wrestling in the last 10 years may not know the struggle of loving the style of wrestling that has been popularized in WWE by the likes of Seth Rollins, AJ Styles, Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, etc., and only having a pair of wrestlers who wrestle that style at the highest level. This is why in 2012, it was so exciting to see Calendar Man Punk and Daniel Bryan paired together for a lengthy rivalry. Hopefully a rivalry we haven't seen the last of. Should yeah. this rivalry have involved AJ Lee proposing to CM Punk in the ring or AJ Lee mounting Kane? Yeah. Who is to say? But the quality yeah. of work between these two could make any strange narrative choices secondary. They had a number of great matches together, but the cream of the crop was certainly their match at Over the Limit, a match that perfectly exemplifies the style they were so good at and the style that WWE was not yet accustomed to. Yeah. A true technical battle mixed with WWE main event showmanship and the crowd ate it up and asked for seconds. Number six. I mean, I'm telling you, bro. <laughs> oh, Tony Khan just does not realize the gold he has. Or maybe he does and just doesn't know how to utilize it. Because, boy, there's no reason why CM Punk shouldn't have. Well, obviously, he was dealing with injury. But, bro, he, man, you need to find a way to get him back on television and definitely get him involved in some of these feuds that we all want to see. I want to see it. <laughs> Danielson, CM Punk, heel Danielson, babyface CM Punk. I want to see it. <laughs> That's what I want to see. Six, Eddie Kingston. If you've been watching this greatest this rival good series too. of lists, you might know that not very often will you see short one and done rivalries featured over longer overarching narratives. Well, there is an exception to every this rule, is good. and in this case, it is the AEW rivalry between Connor McDavid Punk and Eddie Kingston. They get into a backstage argument, they have one promo to sell a match, and yep. then they wrestle eight days later. Yep. Sounds pretty standard, but what a promo and what a match. The rawness of Kingston's yep. words. The fact that effectively, Punk was now in the Cena position, and Eddie in the Punk position from a decade earlier, uh -huh. with Punk now judging Eddie the same way Cena had judged him. Mm -hmm. All building to one of the most anticipated matches of Full Gear 2021. You can really break down every aspect of this fantastic piece of business. From Eddie's empty stare during his entrance to Punk's determined march to the ring, Eddie's cheap shot before the bell, the sheer f you attitude that felt just real enough to not be uncomfortable. Yeah. This remains among a lot of people's favorite AEW programs, and it was all achieved in less than a month. Bro, Number five. because these guys were in it. They they were just, they didn't have to have a crazy build. It was, it was, it's, it came off real. And when you're able to come off real in wrestling nowadays people are automatically hooked oh what we gotta see this this seems real <laughs> five raven the uninitiated may think that ring of honor was just the home of work rate graps and cornette's mental collapse but the early days of roh were also run on some of the best storylines and rivalries of the day including but not limited to this rivalry between charles martin a punk and Raven. Mm. This is a rivalry that was still being heavily referenced on AEW two decades later yeah. because that is just how influential it has been. Punk was fueled by his resentment of Raven for having been given superstardom and lost it because of pills and booze. The mm. matches they had were incredibly heated, ultra violent, and extremely personal, with Punk and Raven battling in a clockwork house of fun match and a dog <laughs> collar match that yeah. served as an inspiration for Punk's best AEW rivalry, which we may or may not hear about later. Oh, yeah, this we're was gonna the first get to rivalry it. of Punk's career to have the amount of substance that fans would come to expect out of the straight edge Chicago made Punk in the years and promotions to come. Just like number four, Jeff Hardy. Mm. Higher ups in WWE didn't think that Cold mm. Macaroni Punk could a be a heel one. during his early years with the company, this is a proving good one once too. and for all that not a single person in management watched a moment of his work prior to signing him, but I digress. The first chance he had to prove them wrong, he put on the best rivalry of his WWE career this to that good. point with Jeff Hardy. For the first time, Punk was finally able to sink his teeth into a storyline, and what did his teeth find but finally some delicious food? 
Punk cashed in Money in the Bank on mm -hmm. Jeff Hardy to thunderous boos one year after he cashed in on Edge to rapturous applause. Yep. This change in response was the catalyst for Punk's heel turn, as he said he did nothing different, but now the fans were choosing someone else over him. And that's literally what it was. It, he did absolutely nothing different. He didn't do anything different. He cashed in on Edge. Everyone loved it. He cashed in on Hardy. No one loved it because everyone loved Jeff Hardy, man. Everyone loves Jeff. So, oh, what they did with him here, it was so good. The impersonation of Jeff Hardy when he wasn't there was so good, bro. Oh. <laughs> and not just someone else, but someone who lives a toxic lifestyle while he was pristine and yeah. straight edge. The matches were all great, especially their TLC match at SummerSlam mm -hmm. 2009, but the real essence of this rivalry of the year winner were the promos. Ooh. Punk's Just Say No promo. The just promo at no. Night of Champions. Punk's <laughs> masterclass of heel work impersonating Hardy after banishing him from WWE. Yep. This was the work that finally catapulted Punk into WWE's yeah. main event scene. <laughs> I guess he could be a heel, huh, guys? He was Number so good. Three, Samoa Joe. Ooh. When people talk about the greatest trilogies in wrestling history, there are a number of rivalries that have to come to mind. Flair Steamboat, FTR Briscoes, Rock Austin, Style Cena, but one that absolutely must be among- And this is the one I've heard so many things about, but never actually really seen. I know there was rumors of him wanting to work with Samoa Joe when he got back, which I think that's must-see TV. I've always heard about this feud, but I never actually seen it. Among them is Christian McCaffrey Punk and Samoa Joe. After his highly personal rivalry with Raven in 2003, Punk had earned top contender status for the ROH World Championship in 2004. Their trilogy of ROH title matches were the crown jewel in Joe's legendary title reign and yet another beacon drawing eyes onto Ring of Honor at the time. It is a bold claim, but I feel comfortable saying that Samoa Joe is CM Punk's greatest in-ring rival. Two 60-minute mm. draws, the second of which was an honest-to-God five-star classic and maybe the best match of Punk's career, and the final match where Joe finally defeated Punk to retain his title. Three magical matches sewn together with incredible chemistry. Although I guess that would make them three scientific matches. Hmm. Number two, John <laughs> Cena. While the summer of Punk circa 2011 ended up being about 50% of what it should have one. been, no one will ever be able to minimize the sheer awesomeness that was the Money in the Bank 2011 For pay-per-view sure. cycle. Legendary. When Chuck Mosley Punk sat down on the entrance ramp to air his grievances with John Cena and the rest of WWE, he brought a lot of people back to a previously stale WWE product. I'm one of those people he brought back. <laughs> I don't know if that promo doesn't happen. I don't know. If I watch wrestling like I do now, hell, that, that may be, you know, maybe this channel is not what it is. If it wasn't for, you know, partially, obviously, you know, homie dove inspired me to create my own channel and, and you know, kind of do my branch off and do my thing. But the fact that I was into wrestling and this channel may not be, you know, what it is now. If it's not for that promo and me seeing that. I'm like, oh, let me let me check out some Monday Night Raw, man. Let me check out some WWE again. So you guys know this, but I'm always going to. It's just always something that is near and dear to my heart, you know. And the response to the now legendary pipe bomb created probably the greatest environment for a non-Big 4 WWE pay-per-view at Money in the Bank. I rewatched this match recently, and it is a proper five-star match. And For one sure. of the best in WWE history comfortably. Mm, no, CM Punk, the no anti-authority rebel, taking on the walking embodiment of WWE was a perfect dynamic, whether it be during the summer of 2011 or following Punk's 2012 heel turn, with their September 2012 promo in Montreal recapturing the same authenticity that had fueled their rivalry the year before. Mm -hmm. Their Night of Champions draw is severely underrated as another great match between them, and their final Final match, you know, the one with the pile driver, perfectly capped off yep. their feud with Cena finally getting his win over Punk in the last time they would ever come face to face. One of the greatest rivalries in WWE since the turn Fact. of the century. But for Punk, there was one. Ah, f it, you already know what it is. Yeah, Number one, MJF. It's, it's MJF. How do you about? even sum up the rivalry between <laughs> Captain so Marvel Punk and MJF? This is when I was watching AEW Weekly. Oh my God, they were so, so good. Hopefully we get this one day again. Hopefully. I don't know how they do it, but no, the table's being turned now. MJF the champ. CM Punk on the hunt, on the chase. Oh, man. Tony, bro. Tony, you have gold. 
stop listening to everyone in the back and run your company and make the most money you can. You have gold. Use it. F in a couple hundred words. The first storyline Punk had in AEW that was longer than a few weeks. This was what everyone was hoping for when Punk returned to wrestling oh, after seven years. So good. Yes, the promos were incredible. Yes, the matches were incredible. But yep. what this list is really about is what the rivalry did for both guys. This rivalry was what made MJF a fully formed character, yeah. stripping away the layers upon layers of heel shtick that had been built up on top of a traumatized young man. This was MJF's villain origin story. And Facts. the first time we had seen him be more than the insult slinging silver tongued devil he had been during the first three years of AEW. For Punk, this rivalry was a chance for him to confront the consequences of his actions. And Lord knows it is difficult to write that about CM Punk, but work with me here. This was a rivalry that delved deeper and deeper into these characters as it went on. Whereas it started as two of the best talkers in the business throwing Ooh. excellent barbs at one another, it became a story about two damaged individuals coming to grips with where their choices had left them. <laughs> Punk trying to do better, and MJF accepting his role as the villain. I believe this to be on the short list of the best wrestling storylines ever told, and the best piece of business CM Punk has ever been part of. To be continued? Question mark? And Hopefully, that's our list. God damn it. <laughs> Hopefully, please. Damn, man. Just get him on the damn show somehow. Jesus. Just get him back on the damn show. Just get him back on the show, bro. Get him back, bro. I would love to see, not right now, even if he was to return, but I would love to see a dynamic as MJF is the champ and CM Punk is the challenger trying to get the title i would love to see that dynamic keep mjf the same and have mjf beat him legit i'm all for it ah this could be so good you know what you gotta do tony khan be a fucking boss handle up on your employees do what you gotta do to make great television feel me but comment down below let me know who do you guys think is cm punk's greatest rival in his career man let me know who do y'all think his greatest rival ever in his entire career let me know down below me personally if i had to choose and it's a very tough one it's just very very tough i'ma probably go even though promo wise what we saw with mjf and cm punk was chef's kiss master class fantastic they were just on another level promo wise and what they did if i gotta go with impact for me it's gonna be cm punk and john cena because obviously that feud brought me back to wrestling as a whole so i'm gonna give it to them and a close number two is gonna be mjf and and cm punk so but let me know down below who y'all think is his greatest rival but i appreciate all the love and support road to 150k and i'm still young to be the youtube wrestling champion of the world appreciate y'all kicking with me see you on the next one peace